Hey everyone, I'm glad you could be here with me today. We're going to have some fun today. Now, you know, I keep talking about how when we're doing keto, we don't snack and we don't need dessert and keto baking isn't isn't the, the greatest option, but we're going to do some more keto baking today because people have birthdays and people have anniversaries and people have special occasions that they need to celebrate. So let's make a coconut keto mug cake. It's going to be fun. You're going to love it. Now, first thing we need is a mug. Now, I've got to warn you, anytime you're making a mug cake, you want the mug that you're using to be twice the size of the cake that you want. Right? Okay. So this holds about 16 ounces, 500 milliliters. Um, and we are going to use this to make our cake in, even though this cake would nicely fit into an eight ounce mug. But if we cook it in an eight ounce mug, because it rises so high, it bubbles up over top and it makes a heck of a mess. And this is the voice of experience. So you really want to trust me on this one. Okay. This is easy peasy and it isn't even going to make a big mess in your kitchen. Uh, we need, we need my recipe in front of me so that I can remember my numbers. Uh, we need 23 grams of coconut flour. Now this is about two tablespoons, but we weigh everything and that way we have consistency. And if you're making several of these, being consistent is a good thing. Uh, if you want to make several of these, I would measure everything into a bowl so that you know what the entire recipe weighs and then portion it out into mugs so that it all comes out the same. Or you can just do separate ones, whichever works for you. Okay, so 23 grams of coconut flour, um, 30 grams of erythritol. That's about two tablespoons. And we need a quarter of a teaspoon where is my little itty bitty teaspoon a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder now this is homemade baking powder and i know i've talked to you guys about this before the baking powder that you buy in the store is half cornstarch and cornstarch is a grain and that grain is going to raise our blood sugar and it's not going to do good things for us so we are using homemade baking powder this is two parts cream of tartar one part baking soda so one teaspoon of of cream of tartar half a teaspoon of baking soda you mix that and then measure out the baking powder that you need you're going to want to cut back by about half so this this one i went looking for recipes that i could tweak and and make my own um all of the mug cake recipes that i found had half a teaspoon of baking powder in it when you're making your own baking powder and it is so easy please do it because it's so much better for you when you're making your own baking powder um, you don't need to worry about that. Now, while we're getting this mixed up, we are going to take 15 grams of butter and we're going to throw it in the microwave. We're going to put it in there for 20 seconds. It doesn't necessarily need to be melted, but it does definitely, definitely need to be soft because we want it to mix into this well. Now, I should be doing this over here where you can see me. Now, I've just incorporated all of the dry ingredients into the mug. And our butter is ready. See, it only takes a few seconds. And I even had a few more seconds than I actually needed. Now, we need to add one egg in here there it is and again she forgets the cloth what the heck there we go I cannot do work in the kitchen without the cloth in my pocket and then we are going to add 30 grams of whipping cream And we want to make sure that we get all of the whipping cream. You know, when you're dealing with tiny amounts like this, 
When you need 30 grams, if you don't scrape out the bowl, you may only end up with 15 or 60, or if you need 30, you may end up with only 25. Now we're just going to give this a bit of a, a bit of a beat so that it's mixed. And then, now we're getting a ton of flavor from the coconut flour. So we don't really need to add anything extra in here for flavor. Now again, because these are such small measurements, it's just really important that you use a spatula and get all of your ingredients out of your bowl. Now we're going to mix this together in the mug. See, you just really only need the one extra bowl. Okay, now I'm going to use my spatula a little bit, make sure this is thoroughly mixed in here. Now this is a really quick, awesome treat if you're having company over, you have somebody stopping over for coffee, you can whip this up in seconds, throw it in the microwave, and you can serve it warm or cold. Either way is just fine. And I want to make sure we get all this batter off here. Although, I gotta say, one of my favorite parts of when I was a kid, when my mom was cooking, was being able to lick the beaters or the spoon. Okay, now we are going to take this and we're going to put it in the microwave for 90 seconds, one and a half minutes. Good morning, Dale. Hi, Sherry. Okay, so that is just that easy. And then when it comes out of the microwave, we're going to sprinkle a little bit of unsweetened um, dried coconut on it. Now you can also mix some of this into the batter. That is absolutely fine as well. Um, you don't want to go more than a teaspoon because this is a small cake. And even though coconut is keto friendly, it does have a little bit in it for carbs. Now, I had planned on recharging my whipped cream charger this morning, and I didn't do it. So we are just going to take this out of the way. And we'll take a look at that when it comes out of the, out of the microwave. But I was on top of things because I wanted you guys to be able to see how beautiful these are. always seems like I'm missing at least one thing when I get started. I need to make sure that that isn't true. Now look at how this has just cooked. And when you're cooking in the microwave, you're not going to get any browning on the cake. So it's important that you feel it to see. And I didn't even need to do that. It just flips right out and it looks lovely. Now you can decorate this with whipped cream. And this one 90 seconds in the microwave and it is done. Uh, I could maybe, no, I think it's done. There we go. So we have got 90 seconds and our cake is done. And it just needs to set aside and cool. And while that's cooling, if you have some whipped cream made, now this one probably is not quite cool enough for this to do anything other than melt and run off, but it's going to give you the idea. And then we can sprinkle a little bit of coconut on top. And if you want to replate that back in the mug and just leave it this way and put the whipped cream on top, sprinkle a little coconut on it, and there you have an amazing dessert that only took, how long did it take? Five minutes? Not even? 
Okay, so it's all well and good that we've made a dessert, but is it worth eating is the question. Mm. It is definitely worth eating. Okay. Hmm. Coconut in my coffee this morning too. Are you sensing a theme? I'm inviting Summer to join us. I am wearing a penguin apron today because it is just cold and chilly and feeling way more like winter than I want it to at the end of April. But that is a coconut mug cake. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about doing keto and who should and who shouldn't. And are there people that shouldn't? You know, in my perfect world, there are only two kinds of people that could have very rare medical conditions. Um, Hypercholesterol, hypercholesterolemia. I'm probably saying that wrong, but there are a couple of conditions where people cannot process protein. They cannot process fat. Um, those types of medical conditions are very, very rare. They're typically genetic. Um, and they definitely will prevent someone from doing keto, at least in a way that I could coach them to do. Maybe if they had um, help from a medical professional that specializes, I don't know. But for the average person, it hurts my heart when I see people and listen to people talking that are telling me that they have whatever medical condition it is that they have, whether they're battling cancer or they are um, dealing with a, a type 2 diabetes that's progressing. They have early onset Alzheimer's. There are so many conditions that we have that we deal with in our families, we deal with with our friends every single day. And they're preventable and they're reversible. And the one that I heard most recently, um, there has been research done that shows that cataracts, if you do keto, not only can you prevent cataracts, but there's research suggesting that keto will even reverse cataracts as long as they're not too far gone. Now, cataracts definitely run in my family. My grandmother had them, my mom had them, my dad had them. Lots of people in my family have had cataracts and had them successfully removed and everything was fine. I'm having a different issue with my vision right now that I'm really looking forward to going and getting checked out and I will definitely be sharing it with all of you when I do. When I read my, my um, computer screen, if I'm wearing my glasses, I can't see it. Now, I've worn glasses since I was about eight years old. <coughs> Pardon me. And this isn't something that we've really talked about um, when we've been together on Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, but we're going to talk about it today. If you've worn glasses all your life, not wearing glasses is a really different feeling. Now, I cannot see things at a distance. Um, I've always been nearsighted and part of that is likely genetic and part of it is because of an eye injury that I had when I was in grade two. Left me was a huge great big shiner. At any rate, what I've been noticing the last few months is that if I'm wearing my glasses and I'm trying to read, I can't read. If I take my glasses off, I can read perfectly. Now right now, when I'm looking at my computer screen, if I stand back away from it, I'm about four feet away from the screen and I can easily read everything that's on it. And granted, I do have a bigger monitor um, that I'm looking at when we're together, but even when I'm looking at the small monitor on my laptop or I can read the screen when it's up close and I couldn't do that six months ago or a year ago. 
But when you start doing keto, are all of the benefits that you see going to happen right away? Nope, they are absolutely not. Now this difference in vision happened for my husband much quicker than it happened for me. And I really didn't believe that it would happen for me. And I haven't had it confirmed, but I will. And I will definitely let you know. When you start doing something that is good for your health, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about working out or doing keto or journaling or doing whatever it is that you're doing to make your health better, it takes time. If you're looking for a quick fix, keto is not the answer for most things. Now that being said, you start doing keto very strictly and it will make a huge difference in a lot of the medication that you take if you're a type 2 diabetic. That's why I tell you if you are taking diabetes medication for type 2 diabetes, okay, that's important. Type 1 is something totally different. But if you are taking medication for type 2 diabetes, you need your doctor involved in your keto journey because you need someone that can de-prescribe medication for you. I had someone phone me a while ago and they said, I'm taking this medication and I need someone to de-prescribe it. And somebody told me to call you, Sharon. I cannot de-prescribe. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a nurse practitioner. Now in Canada, to the best of my knowledge, the only one that can de-prescribe medication is your doctor. Now, if you go to your doctor and you say, you know what, I think my blood pressure medication is too much because I've been getting lightheaded and I've been... Blood pressure medication, if you're taking too much, can cause low blood pressure. That's what it's designed to do is lower your blood pressure. You need your doctor to de-prescribe. Don't just stop taking it. Now, I recently encountered someone who decided that um, the type... The, diabetes medication they were taking for type 2 diabetes was causing brain fog. So they just quit taking it. And when you do something like that, which you absolutely have the right to do, it's your body, but you're asking for trouble. You don't just stop taking it. You really need things weaned down. So that's my keto lecture. I keep seeing all of these people that would benefit from keto so much and they don't know it and they need somebody like you to tell them to come and join us so they can find out that just because you're doing keto does not mean that everything is going to be bland and boring and you're not just eating kale and bacon that's not how we roll when we're doing keto we have coconut cakes and we have chocolate cake and we have now, another cake that is easy to do in the microwave is um, my Keto Black Forest Mug Cake. Easy. We'll do that another day. For today, it's the coconut cake. And this is absolutely wonderful. And I'm thrilled with the way it turned out. A lot of times, recipes that you find might not be exactly what you're wanting them to be tweak them a little bit. And if you have a recipe um, from pre-keto that you love, tell me what it is and I'll see what I can do to keto it for you. Now, the other thing that I really want to warn people about, there are things that we associate with being keto um, that are not. And one of those things, and we've talked about this already today, is baking powder. When you buy baking powder in the store, it is half cornstarch. When you buy mayonnaise, now I still have Hellman's mayonnaise. Now this is real mayonnaise made with Canadian free run eggs and canola oil. But I'll tell you what, if you buy Hellman's mayonnaise and you buy the one that says olive oil on the front, look at the back because I guarantee you the first ingredient is canola oil. The only thing that I will say about that is it is a little bit better than soybean oil. And there are other, um, other brands of mayonnaise that are made with soybean oil. You can make your own mayonnaise. You can. It is super easy. I promise. So I think when we get together on Sunday, 
we are going to make some mayonnaise. I will show you how easy it is. And when we are done making the mayonnaise, um, we'll use it to make some salad dressing and we will have a wonderful salad for lunch on Sunday. So join me on Sunday um, and yeah, we will get all of this done and we'll see if it's possible for me to actually have everything that I need arranged before I get here. Maybe, it could be a thing, we'll see. So send me your ideas for what you would like to see in a salad. What kind of salad dressing do you like? I guarantee you we will not be using Hellman's mayonnaise, even with free, free run eggs, because we do not want canola oil in our, um, in our salad or in anything else that we eat. Another one that we've talked about before, and I'm going to talk about it again, is sour cream. There are two brands that I know of that do not have anything bad in them. They are just good sour cream, and that's Bleswold Dairy Sour Cream and Gay Lee Sour Cream. If you watch on the package, it says, or on the container, it says 18% milk fat. That is wonderful for sour cream. When you look at other brands of sour cream, um, 0%, no fat cream. And if you're making sour cream, you would presume that the first ingredient would be cream. Not always so. And how is it thick? It's thickened with cornstarch. It's made with skim milk and thickened with cornstarch. That is gross. And it's not good for you. And if you're going to spend money on food, spend your money on real food. It doesn't really take any longer. So let's put this back in here. There are some things that you can buy that are absolutely keto friendly and they come in a jar. And one of my favorites is Pace Salsa. Now I can't eat it a lot because I've talked about this before, nightshade vegetables have an effect on me. And that being said, um, I was invited to my brother's last night for supper and we had an amazing taco salad. And I am very thrilled and honored to tell you that they were using um, taco seasoning from TSL Organics. And it was wonderful, but I did put a little bit of fresh tomato on my salad and I put a little bit of salsa on my salad. And I had a good night's sleep last night and I woke up this morning and I am exhausted. And that's the only thing that I did that really would cause me to be tired. So if you pay attention to what your body is telling you when you eat different foods, you will learn so much. You will. But you have to listen and you have to give your body that time to heal. Having a really strict bedtime schedule, not just for you, but for your family. If you have children, you know they need their sleep at night if they're going to do well in school the next day. Or, I mean, how many times have you heard parents say, oh, if I don't get this kid to bed on time, he's, he or she is just a bear the next day. It's because they didn't get enough sleep. And we are not different. And if you pay attention to your moods, keep a mood journal. Just on a piece of paper, write down how you're feeling first thing in the morning, or just put a happy face or a frowny face, whatever it is that works for you, and go back and look at that mood journal. And as well as putting how you're feeling, put down how much sleep you had the night before. Because if you're only getting four or five hours sleep, you are not going to be at the top of your game. If you are getting six hours sleep, you're maybe gonna be a little bit better. If you're getting eight, now we're talking. And if you're having trouble falling asleep, take a melatonin supplement. It works really well and it's going to help you not off to sleep. If you have sleep apnea, if anybody has told you that you snore terribly at night, get tested for sleep apnea. Maybe you need a CPAP machine. That will make a huge difference in the quality of your sleep and the length of your sleep. If you're not breathing, your body is going to wake you up so that you can consciously take a breath or two or lots. Pay attention to what's going on. And honestly, I, I think I've said that about two dozen times today, but I mean it. When I would go to the chiropractor three years ago, um, my whole back, top to bottom, a, a wide swath on my back, the whole thing was sore. 
when I go to the chiropractor now, as they go down or up my vertebrae, I know exactly where they need to adjust because I can feel the pain in any vertebrae that is out of place. Now, granted, I've lost a lot of weight, but that's not why. Because this started very soon after I started my keto journey. It's because the inflammation was gone. Inflammation will cause pain in a large area. If that inflammation is gone, the pain is more pinpointed, more localized. So listen to what your body is telling you. Is that inflammation going away? Are you accidentally eating something inflammatory like sour cream or mayonnaise that are supposed to be keto friendly and they're not? I'm gonna show you one other thing. Now, I just bought a brand new package. Ugh. And around she goes again, because I just decided that this was a good idea to share with you. Now, I made a trip to Costco, and these are organic roasted seaweed snacks. Now, snacking, not the best idea when we're doing keto, but you can have these with a meal. You can have them before a meal, after a meal, you want to keep your eating window very specific. So you don't want to be snacking all day. You want the window of time in your day when you're eating to be two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, whatever it is. But if you sit down and eat a meal, make sure that there's at least three hours before you eat the next meal. You need that. You just do. Make a coconut keto mug cake and share it with someone for dessert. If you're trying to lose weight, this is way more than you want for one serving. But if you have a friend to share it with, this is awesome and you will love it. Now, this has been cooling for a little while. So let's see what this is going to look like. Oh my, oh my. And she needs another plate for crying out loud. I'm gonna have to start keeping a stack of plates right under here where I keep my bowls. Now, I haven't loosened this at all. And you can see on this side, it looks like it's kind of attached, but it really isn't. So let's turn this, we're just gonna give it a little bit of a smack. And look at that. Just comes right out. Nothing much left in the mug. A few crumbs. We'll wash that out easy enough. This is lovely. Now these can also be frozen. So if you want to make a few of these ahead of time, stick them in the freezer. Make sure you take them out a couple hours ahead of time. So we are at the end of our time together. Join me on Sunday. We're going to make a salad for lunch. We're going to make the mayonnaise that we are going to use to make the salad dressing. We can do this. It's easy. And you don't have to love to cook and you don't have to be good at cooking. You just have to follow a couple directions and you can do it. Okay. I will see you on Sunday. Thank you very much for being here. I am very grateful that you joined me and I hope you do your very best to live your best version of this shining life over the weekend until I see you on, on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.